Welcome to Episode 4 of our Modern Relevance of God podcast series here on Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. I'm Richard Lloyd-Jones. Last time, we looked at the mathematization of science, which effectively sheared away the 5,000 years of Judeo-Christian knowledge, as if it had suddenly become obsolete as if acknowledgment of the divine influence in human affairs was tantamount to continuing to believe the earth was flat. That's what materialistic science brought us. As English scientist, philosopher, theologian, and scientific revolution apologist William Hewell phrased it in the 1800s, quote, The scientific revolution was a transition from an unbounded reverence for the wisdom of the past to a fervid expectation of change and improvement. End of quote. That perfectly articulated the new view of nature that emerged at that time, replacing the more spiritual perspective that had dominated science for the previous 2,000 years. And in the rush to move to quantifying everything with physical evidence and need to validate only those theories that are falsifiable, we reduce the wonder of creation, the miracle of life, to numbers and equations. Love is a chemical reaction. Psychic perception is coincidence. God is a creation of the human being who needs something to believe in. As Edwin Burt put it in his book, The Metaphysical Foundations of Modern Science, quote, the natural world was portrayed as a vast, self-contained, mathematical machine. End of quote. Science simply removed the wonder of creation and replaced it with neurons and chemical reactions, and man was shoved apart as an unimportant spectator. All this is problematic, as we'll see in this episode. Cesar Sauce is here once again to illustrate the problems inherent in this view. I think the biggest problem today is that some people, they are comfortable with these problems, saying that this is natural. For example, wars are natural, misery is natural. We've always had them. Uh, the depletion of the planet is, is natural because it's, this is a process of evolution. Mankind always have is cyclical, this process. This is a kind of very common idea. There is an underlying philosophical thought unconscious to them that leads them to think that all that is natural. Mm -hmm. And this can be placed in the Aristotle because he institutionalized the idea of evolution. And he institutionalized the idea of materialism. His philosophy led to that. For example, when he said that nothing comes to your intellect that hasn't come first from your senses. Right, you can't understand anything that doesn't come through your senses first. First, yes. He was, in other words, saying that the sensorial life is essential for knowledge. So your physical body, your instincts are essential for understanding of the abstract world or intellectual life. And uh, this led to a, a series of mistakes that other philosophers continue. All of the philosophies, all of the isms, Darwinisms, Freudisms, relativism, uh, relativisms, consumerism, consumerism capitalism, uh, Marxism, socialism, socialisms, communisms, all this would be false promises of happiness to the human being and to mankind. For example, Richard, Freud belonged to an area uh, where materialism, completely materialism, was being instituted in the 20th century in our science. And he led man to believe that uh, the satisfaction of the sexual life would lead man to happiness, that all of his mental problems would be a consequence of the sexual life, as yeah. if human being was... Just the body, just instinct and mind would follow. In other words, he pushed man to believe more and more that wars are natural, that uh, sickness is natural, death is natural. You cannot do anything about it. You just have to go around these problems, you know, because right. he said we have naturally a death instinct and a life instinct, as if evil inside of you was something natural. 
And so he helped humanity to hide this voice of consciousness that Dr. Cappy speaks a lot about. Hide this voice of ethics inside of you, this fingerprint of God you are born with. He said that you get sick when you are censored. Dr. Cappy says that Freud should have said the human being gets sick because of the censorship he makes with this inner voice of truth he has. And this is due to theomania, to the mania of feeling yourself a god. Because if you feel that you are a god, you think you are always right. So when you have a, a violent instinct, you want it immediately to blame somebody else, not to see it in yourself. Where is the inner life the Holy Spirit in this theory. And this is very easy to understand because uh, many people, they prefer to die rather than seeing the truth about themselves. So they are prepared to cause wars, to kill, even to die rather than seeing their mistakes. Up next would be, Cesar, as we look at our list of inverted scientists who've affected our thinking, driven our scientific view, the most famous biologist of the 20th century, although he did all his work in the 19th century, Charles Darwin. <laughs> there are Many a things. lot of things. To... <laughs> so he led humanity to believe that we can be gods in the future, that we evolve from one species to another. There never had been any evidence of that, never. But this is instituted in, in science, in schools, as if it was a truth. His philosophy of life, if we can say that, also led human beings to kill spirituality. Because if you come from an ape, there is no God. This was nourished the idea that transcendence is impossible, that transcendence is just a dream or a fancy thing. What really exists is matter, is what I can sense. In this sense, Darwin was completely Aristotelic as well, like Freud. Your uh, happiness comes from the instincts. And here as well, you see the same spirit. Man replaced God, a wonderful, total beautiful creature, creator of everything. Uh, he replaced it by an ape. And even worse than that, Richard, modern Darwinists today believe human beings came from viruses. So he replaced <laughs> Godfather for a viruses, which is closer to Satan than God, yeah. if you see. Yeah. So we can see the, the satanic trinity working perfectly here yeah. as well. And when you read uh, modern Darwinists, you read a lot about how they, they talk about how nature has no feelings. Nature doesn't care about you. Yeah, it only on. cares about survival. And For example, just because you are superior than a dog in evolution, you see a dog and you start kicking it. No way. The more uh, evolved, let's say, you are, the more you care for the inferior elements. You take care of your house, you take care of your plants, you take care of your cat, of nature. You don't pollute the rivers. So consciousness is something completely against evolution of human being, let's say. Consciousness is completely against this idea of yeah. fight for survival. Yeah. And nature is constantly looking after us. We constantly have oxygen. We constantly have opportunities to have food and beautiful fruit on the trees unless we destroy it, you know? Yeah. Let me give you one example of this, how nature can repair our wrongdoings. Here in Sao Paulo, we have a very important river called the Tietê River. And Tietê River, it gets very polluted, completely dead, no life in the river. But 200 kilometers away from here, the river, you can drink the water, mm -hmm. you know, and it's downstream. So it means nature have their own ways to recover the wrongdoings we do. But I also think what's interesting about that is that the nature in its natural state, the river in its natural state, is not a mixture of polluted river and good river. The the river in its natural state. This is the thing about the the balance of nature. The balance of nature is perfect. Yeah. It's not a mixture of perfection and and becoming perfection. It is perfection. It is perfection. It, it works in total harmony. It's not becoming anything. So the idea of of Darwin is totally based on the idea that we have to become 
a level of perfect, but nature in its natural state is perfect. It works in perfect harmony with itself. Like Parmenides, the creator of metaphysics in ancient Greece, he said, the being is and cannot not be. You are what you are and you will always be what you are, a human being, and that's it. And the corollary of that is that you, if you don't exist, you will never exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So a human being existing exists from the beginning. That's why Dr. Kepi says that uh, it's not like Aristotle and the other metaphysicians said, the, there is the non-being and then with the time they become being. It's the opposite. There is the being, and with the time, you can become a non-being. You can kill yourself. By denying yourself. <laughs> the nature of nature. It's beautiful to think about that, isn't it? How it works, how harmonious it is. I think the height of arrogance and ignorance, to think all that came from a tiny explosion, or some single-celled organism struggling away in the primal ooze, or worse yet, from random chaos. Order implies work. It demands organization. I, for the life of me, can't get my head around the idea that all this natural balance comes from billions of years of genetic accidents. As Steve Jones defined it in Darwin's Ghost, which he declared was an update on the origin of the species that includes the modern understanding of viral evolution, for one, as proof of Darwin's theory. The research and clinical practice being done here at the Kepi and Pacheco Trilogical College lays bare the inferiority and wrongheadedness of that view, which leads us, naturally, to a consideration of the nature of the organizer of all this nature. Who puts it all together? That's in our next...